Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rankmate. Today, in this episode of Know Your NMAT, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the NMAT examination. We're going to be looking at how to solve them, and we're going to be looking at why logical reasoning is really important for the NMAT exam. So, let's start off with our first question. So logical reasoning is one of the most important topics in the NMAT exam, so therefore we need to be very attentive when it comes to solving them, like this one. Given the quadratic equation x squared minus a minus 3 times x minus, in bracket, a minus 7 equals 0, for what value of a is the sum of squares of the roots 0? So how do we solve this question? Well, remember, if, if you've studied quadratic equations, you would know that a quadratic equation is of the form ax squared minus bx plus c, and we are going to be uh, using this particular formula of a quadratic equation in order to find the sum of roots and the product of roots. Now the sum of the roots is given as minus b over a, and the product of root is given as c over a. So for this particular equation, the sum of the roots, which are considered as alpha and beta, so alpha plus beta gives you, is written as minus of the value of b here, which is minus a minus 3, and over a, which is, well, 1 in this case. So therefore, the value of alpha plus beta is a minus 3. Now, for alpha beta, which is the product of the roots, it is equal to c over a, and the value of c here is minus of a minus 7. So therefore, minus of a minus 7 divided by 1 is the value of c over a. Now that we know the sum of the roots and the product of the roots, let's look at the question. For what value of a is the sum of squares of the roots 0? So according to the question, we will consider alpha squared plus beta squared as equal to 0. Now, how do we solve that question? I mean, how do we solve this equation? Well, if you remember the left-hand side, it is, it is of the form a plus b the whole squared equals to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So alpha squared plus beta squared can be written as alpha plus beta the whole squared minus 2 alpha beta we use the um, sum of, we use the square of the sum of two numbers. That algebraic expression is what we're using here, and the right-hand side still remains zero. Now, we know the value of the sum of the roots and the product of the roots in this case, so we will apply them. So alpha plus beta will be replaced by a minus 3 in the bracket, and alpha beta is replaced by minus of a minus 7. The right-hand side is still 0. So when you open out all the brackets, uh, the right-hand side, the left-hand side now becomes a squared plus 9 minus 6a plus 2a minus 14. So over here, when we try to, you know, combine terms together, we get a squared minus 4a minus 5 as the expression on the left. The right-hand side is still 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split the middle term to 5 and 1 in order to, uh, you know, break down the equation even further. So what we get is a squared minus 5a plus a minus 5 equals 0. So we then get a times a minus 5 plus 1 times a minus 5 equals 0. So therefore a minus 5 times a plus 1 equals 0. 
So therefore, the value of a is equal to 5, or the value of a is equal to minus 1. So in both of these cases, the sum of squares of the roots of the equation in the question will be equal to 0. So therefore, among the following options, you can see that option 5, I mean option C, that is 5, is the right answer because we know that 5 or minus 1 is applicable for the particular condition and since we have 5 as one of the options that option turns out to be the correct one the other options are incorrect let's look at another question the vice chancellor of abc university decided to form a committee to look into the feasibility of introduction of semester systems at the undergraduate level there are five members from the executive council and seven members in the academic council they're found to be suitable for the job. In how many ways can the vice chancellor form the committee of six members such that at least four belong to the academic council? So if the executive council has five suitable candidates, the academic council has seven suitable candidates, we need to form a committee of six members such that four are from the academic council. So this is basically a, com a question of permutations and combinations. The required ways, so the required combinations in here, would need at least four members from academic. So that means you have seven members in academic, you choose four from them, and then you multiply that with uh, the th three members to be chosen from the executive council. And then we add, the next scenario will be five persons chosen from the academic, and then the last would be all six chosen from the academic. So we will write those scenarios here. Plus 7C6. So these are the three ways in which you can choose members of the committee such that at least four members belong to the academic council. So you have 7C4 times 5C2, 7C5 times 5C1, and 7C6. So these are the ways in which you can choose. So let's find out those combinations. 7C4 uh, would look like this. 5 times 6 times 7 over 2 times 3. The reason being that 7C4 is the same value as 7C3. This is a rule in combinations because NCR becomes the equal value to NC and minus R. So similarly, when you multiply that with 5C2, you get 5 times 4 over 2 times 1. And then the second term would look like this. 7 times 6 over 2. Multiply that with 5. And over here, 7C6 is equal to 7C1, which is equal to 7. So now, if you uh, want to, um, you know, cancel out terms, you can cancel out the denominator in the first term with 6. Here you can cancel out 4 with 2, so the remainder becomes 2. Again, the same thing with 7 into 6 over 2, so you get the 3 in the numerator, and that's how you can solve it. So 5 times 7 gives you 35, times 5 times 2 gives you 10, plus... 7, 3 is a 21 times 5 plus 7. So basically you get 350 plus 105 plus 7. 105 plus 7 gives you 112. 350 plus 112 is equal to 462. So therefore option E, 462, turns out to be the right option here. The idea is to use the permutations, to use the combinations possible, so that at least four members are chosen from the academic council. So for that, when, when you have to choose between two different uh, councils, you would need to multiply the, ch the selection from one by the selection of another. And if there are more than one scenarios, you add the scenarios together. So the total number of ways can be identified, which in this case is equal to 462. So that concludes this episode of know your nmat we hope you found this episode interesting for more of our useful and interesting content don't forget to subscribe to agile rank mate your partner in education if you want to get the latest updates from our channel then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video 
So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.